I'm Jackie and welcome to my magical home. I hope you're ready for some fun tonight because it is time for another movie night special. Our inspiration, the new hit series on HBO, House of the Dragon. Now, if you are not familiar with it, it is a prequel to Game of Thrones and they are doing a fantastic job of bringing Westeros back to life. I really recommend it. Let me know if you guys are checking it out down below in the comments. I'd love to hear your guys' opinions. Now, when I knew that this show was coming out, I thought that this was going to be the perfect opportunity not only to try out some new fun recipes with you guys, but also to have a fun date night with my hubby. So I'm going to be making a charcuterie board inspired by House of the Dragons and the Targaryens, of course, including Oreo Dragon Truffle Eggs. I've also got Raspberry Cheesecake Macarons that we're going to make, an absolutely delectable savory brie. You guys do not want to miss it. Um, and after all of the cooking is done and we've set up that charcuterie board, I'm also going to share a really fun DIY that can help to, you know, level up your game and bring some Targaryen flair to your jammies so you can get all cozy when you're getting ready to watch the next episode. Let me know what you think and don't forget to say hi in the comments down below. Let's get started. As always, we are going to start out with our desserts, and up first, Dragon's Egg Oreo Truffles. I cannot recommend these to you guys enough for so many reasons. One, they are so easy and so simple. Two, they taste amazing. This is not going to be the last time that I make this recipe with you guys. Now, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I started out with half a package of Oreos, and I went ahead and removed the white filling, crushed them up, and then put them in the mixer with four ounces of softened cream cheese. And once this was completely mixed, I took them out and I went ahead and made my egg shapes and I put them into the refrigerator for 30 minutes to help them set. So after those 30 minutes were up, I went ahead and took out my dragon's egg and put them on a piece of parchment paper but on a rack above them so that the stuff could drain down below once we get to the candy melts. And then as you can see, I took melted chocolate in a piping bag and I just go ahead, add a line across my egg, and then cover it with sliced almonds. And this is going to give that dragon's egg texture that the Game of Thrones dragons have. And once these are completely covered, I went ahead and covered them with candy melts. Now, if you just go ahead and you melt candy melts in the microwave, they're going to be really thick. So I added a teaspoon to two teaspoons of coconut oil to this mixture so that it would have a nice smooth consistency and would actually pour over these eggs. Now I feel I must mention that I kind of messed up the colors here. I don't know what I was thinking about, but they were supposed to be black and green eggs and I accidentally made gold and kind of like a green black egg. But I'm gonna show you two different ways to decorate these eggs once you have the candy melts on. Now as you can see, I'm adding the green melts right now and while those melts are actually still wet, I'm going to take that edible spray paint once again and just kind of add to that color. And it actually added like a whole bunch of like this glitter look to it because I layered the gold and black and it just kind of became one with the candy melt but my white eggs that was not possible because I allowed them to dry and I wanted to do that so I could show you how you can actually take luster dust or something of that kind and use it to paint the outside of the eggs if you want to use more of a hardened chocolate um, and you know you're doing multiple at a time and don't have enough time to come in with that spray paint I think that they both turned out really cute, but most importantly you guys these tasted amazing I can't wait to make Oreo truffles in my next creation And now it is time for us to whip up some Targaryen Raspberry Cheesecake Macarons. As you can see, I have the ingredients listed right here, and the cookie recipe is also linked in the description. Now this recipe called for a Swiss meringue, so we are going to start out by double broiling our eggs as well as three tablespoons of our granulated sugar, whisking it continually until it becomes nice and frothy. After that, we are going to take it back to the mixer and go ahead and let it continue to whisk as we add our granulated sugar a little bit at a time. After it's all the way whisked and nice and stiff, we are going to add our food coloring and then it is time to head over to our dry ingredients. But I have to tell you that this did not turn out as I hoped. The, I didn't have a double broiler. Um, the consistency, as you can see, wasn't quite stiff enough and the color didn't turn out. It was a nightmare. But enough of that! When we head over to our dry ingredients, we are going to take our almond flour and our powdered sugar and we are going to sift it together three times. That way we make sure it is nice and like blended together. 
Then the recipe called for me to take it back to the mixer, add it to our like macaron meringue mix here, and whisk it for exactly five seconds before I take it over and hand whisk it myself until I guess you can leave like a number eight in it without it leaving any cracks and it's supposed to be the consistency of lava. So once I felt like I had reached that point, I went ahead and took out my baking pan that I had parchment lined on top and I went ahead and piped out these little macaron cookies. Now after you have them all piped, you are supposed to leave them out 15 to 30 minutes until they are kind of like dry to the touch and that helps to keep them to set when they go into the oven. Now the recipe I was using called for the oven to be at 300 degrees for 15 or 13 to 15 minutes, sorry. But I honestly felt like, as you can see, they were cracked, they were not the right consistency, they were poofy. So I went ahead and when I cooked the second batch of them, I lowered the temperature down to 275 for the same amount of time and I felt like they turned out way better. These are not black, they look like a rock. So I went ahead and took some black sp edible spray and just kind of sprayed them down so that I could get the color that I was looking for. Like, look at that, that looks like a rock, right? So after I was done with that, I took a little bit of my luster dust, like 24 karat gold, and I just added a little bit of white and went ahead and painted on some Targaryen sigil dragons. Now these are so far from perfect, I could not find the right brush, so it was way too thick. This isn't my medium. I could give you a zillion excuses, but these dragons look awful, but it's the thought that counts. Um, I will tell you that if I was doing these for a party or an event that wasn't just my family and I enjoying them or my husband and I, um, these would have been scratched entirely from the cookies, like just to the painting, all of it, I would have done it all over again. But for my husband and I, it was still, it gave the idea, we knew what we were looking at, and I was still pretty happy with the way that they turned out. Once I had my dragons painted on, I came back with a little bit of red edible glitter and added eyes, and then a little bit of black edible glitter and just kind of added a little bit of glitz to it. So there are actually two fillings that are going into these cookies today, but I'm gonna start out by showing you the cheesecake filling first. We are going to be using one quarter cup of butter, two ounces of cream cheese, and a dash of salt, and I'm gonna mix those together. And then once they're well mixed, I'm going to start adding my powdered sugar slowly on low. And then once everything's combined, I'm going to add in my food coloring as well as my edible glitter and put it on high for one minute. Then I add it to my piping bag. I used a star edge and I am just going to go ahead and swirl this around the edges. After that's done, I am going to use another piping bag that I'm going to put in about one to two tablespoons of raspberry jam in, and I'm just gonna fill in the middle of these little cookies and put on their tops. I thought that they looked incredibly impressive. They were super sweet, but they were absolutely yummy. Um, if you guys decide to try these, please let me know and take pictures, I wanna see what you do. So our desserts are ready to go. It is time to start out with our savory front, including some God's wood cauliflower and a high garden brie. So stay tuned. So it is almost time to put together our board, but first we need to talk about two themed savory dishes that we're gonna be putting on it, starting with our God's wood cauliflower. Now I have a small piece of cauliflower here, so I was only able to get one large tree, but I did try to get two smaller tree shapes as well. And you cut a one inch chunk right out of the center of the cauliflower to make your big tree. And I'm going to be using a pastry tool to kind of etch on a little face onto these trees. Um, I do come back over it with some black like food coloring to just kind of accent the face shape so you can see it better. Um, but 
Then I'm going to come in with some garlic butter and you can see I have two different kinds here. One has red food coloring and that's because I'm going to use that to make those red leaves on top of the werewood tree and the different for the godswood trees. So um, if you are unfamiliar, it is called a werewood tree when it is crying in the middle, but it is the godswood that they sit in. So I didn't really know exactly how to name this. I just kind of went with it. But you just go ahead and coat the whole trunk of it with normal garlic butter, which just has garlic salt and butter in it. And then like I said earlier, you take the top of it and you just add that garlic butter with the red food dye on the top. Then I'm gonna etch in my little face. Now be really careful here because you wanna make sure that you have enough garlic butter as much as you want on here before you add any kind of face because I did smear mine and that was kind of a total bummer, but it still created the vibe so I was happy. And I added a little bit of edible glitter just because you know I can't help myself. Once this was done, I covered this up with a piece of aluminum foil and I put it in the oven at 350 degrees for 10 minutes. Then I came in and added my two smaller pieces because I knew they took less time to cook. So I went ahead and added the butter on top, added the garlic butter on the bottom, and put those back in the oven until everything was nice and tender and they were ready to go on my charcuterie board. And it is time for our next creation. So while the cauliflower is in the oven, we are going to prep our high garden herb and garlic savory brie. Now, next to the Oreo truffles, this was my absolute favorite. I have an, a sourdough roll here, and I just go ahead and hollow out a piece for the brie. And then you can see I kind of cut along the sides so that it makes little pull off pieces that were really easy to get to. Um, then I cut off the top of my brie, score it, and make sure that it fits, and it's time to add some garlic butter to the inside. Now, once I got all of the edges and everything completely coated, I'm gonna go ahead and put that brie back in, and let's start working on our toppings. Now, I have a shallot here that I have finely diced, as well as some fresh herbs from the garden. There's thyme, oregano, chives, um, I think a little bit of sage, just basically what you'd see in Italian herb seasoning. And I go ahead and saute the shallots in some butter. As you can see, I'm kind of a little slow in my talking. <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and put that on and then follow up with those delicious herbs. And I actually had a flower that was on my chives and I went ahead and stuck that into the center of this. And I feel like it just kind of made the whole look of the brie and added a little bit of edible glitter because you know, I can't help myself. Um, after that, I put back on the top and I throw this into the oven for about 20 minutes until the brie starts to get gooey. I don't know, I just kind of kept an eye on it. Try this recipe. If you don't try any of the others, the Oreo recipe, Oreo truffles and that try it and then it's time to put together the actual charcuterie board itself like so I tried to make one of those salami roses I don't think that it looked very great but it was an attempt and then I just put everything together on the board and I was so excited with the way that this turned out I couldn't be more pleased I added some fresh fruit as well please don't forget to let me know what you think. I did notice I almost forgot to add my desserts to the platter. So I went ahead and added this little like elevated tray here and I'm just gonna go ahead and add those. And make sure and stay tuned because after I am done setting all of this up, I have a fun DIY to go ahead and take your House of the Dragon night a little bit extra. ready and you guys it is killing me to not just break into that brie it smells so good but first I want to show you a really fun DIY to help upgrade your PJ game with a little Targaryen flair okay so we are going to be making a Targaryen bleach art t-shirt and to do that I have this image that I bought off from a seller on Etsy and I used my Cricut to go ahead and cut the image out with some vinyl that I had on hand and once I had it completely weeded I went ahead and applied this to a black t-shirt that I just had laying around 
and it was time to add the bleach fun. Now I like to put in a piece of foam board or two to make sure that I'm not getting the back of my t-shirt when I do this. And then I just add the bleach to a spray bottle and just continue to spray around the image until I feel like I've gotten enough bleach art on there. Now if you do see any bleach pooling on top of your vinyl, you wanna make sure and clean it up with the paper towel like you saw me do a second ago. And that will help to make sure that you don't have any blotches on your shirt. So once this was all the way done, I went ahead and took off the sticker and You'll see it looks so cool, right? Like everything was so crisp, it was perfect. And so I went ahead and threw this into the washing machine. So I was totally digging the bleach art look to this, but I thought why not add a little bit of color? So we're gonna add some tie dye, but first I need soda ash and I didn't have any on hand. So I took some baking soda and I put it in the oven at 200 degrees for one hour, turning it from sodium bicarbonate into sodium carbonate, AKA soda ash. And I went ahead and added that to one cup of water and soaked my t-shirt in it and then strained it out. And it was time to add that tie dye fun. Now here's where I made the mistake though. I added my tie-dye to these little spray bottles thinking it would add like this cool like blending effect no what it did is not add enough color so I did not feel like this was quite bright as, as bright as I hoped but oh well once I had added the color here I put it into a bag and let it sit for about 15 hours before I washed it and you will see the effect at the end it is subtle but I still feel like this looked really cool I made one for my hubby as well and it just gives us a little bit of something extra for when we're going to go snuggle in and watch the new episode so I hope that you really liked today's content as well as my DIY shirt idea. I actually did get to make one for my hubby as well and so it is something that is just going to be a fun little extra for us when we get ready to watch those new episodes every Sunday. I'd love to hear your opinions about today's content in the comments down below and I hope that you've had an absolutely magical day and I can't wait to see you next time my friends.